So let's dive into virtualization a little bit. Ultimately, we have to have hardware resources in order to virtualize. So what we're taking here is we've got three servers and we've got a storage array. Each one of these servers has hardware resources. For each one of these, we're going to say it's got 16 CPU. Notice we didn't say vCPU, because these are hardware resources. And let's say we've got 256 gigs of RAM. Each one of these will have the same amount. And over here, we've got a storage array that has physical disks. It could be a combination of SSD tier 1, tier 2, tier 3. But ultimately, uh, without getting into the weeds on the storage, which we've covered, uh, this is our storage presentation. So let's say we've got 40 terabytes worth of, worth of uh, hardware resources here underneath the hypervisor. What we do is we take what ultimately creates the virtualization is we take a hypervisor, and in this case we use VMware. It abstracts these underlying resources. It takes the physical resources and manages access to those resources. So we may have 16 here, 16 here, 16 here, and then ultimately we're going to be able to present all of these resources that are physical and manage how those are being consumed by the infrastructure as a service and the additional, additional services that we're going to be presenting. And again, these are typically represented in virtual machines. For the sake of time, we've got additional, additional virtual machines here. Historically with hardware, prior to virtualization, if we wanted to make any kind of adjustments to these servers, we would have to shut them down, get a screwdriver, open them up, physically add more, maybe take some stuff out, add more stuff in so we, so, so we can grow that server and, and ultimately have more resources. Because of this virtualization layer, because of the hypervisor, and in our case VMware, we're able to control these resources that are being presented up into the virtual machine very easily. So we may start off in this virtual machine by having four vCPU and decide that we need more vCPU. So now we go in, we make a configuration change while we're sitting on our desk from a portal. So we'll manage that from up here. This is the IT person on his laptop, and he's the one from his portal sitting here at his house, and he's changing these resources. He's not in the data center fiddling with the servers. So now we've got 8V CPU, and we've also upgraded, and now we have 16 gigs of VRAM. And again, that's VRAM, not RAM, because it's virtualized. So what does this do for us? Well, it simplifies deployment, maintenance, support. It reduces power overhead. It reduces cost. And at the end of the day, what we have is a very flexible environment that allows us to deploy and manage our IT environment in a much more responsible way. In summary, we have our hardware resources. We have our hypervisor, which creates the virtualization layer that presents a software solution that historically was presented via hardware. So we have our software containers. And much like a Word document, where we can copy and paste a Word document, we have virtual machines. And just as easily, almost as easily, we can take a, a single virtual machine and copy and paste it. So we have two of the same thing, or a set of them, create templates for them, rapidly deploy those virtual machines to additional containers. So this may be a web server. Then we have an additional server and create more and more of those. And at the end of the day, a single IT resource, our gentleman that's sitting at home, is able to orchestrate and kind of be the master puppeteer of this entire IT environment very easily, whereas historically he was doing that in the data center.